After weeks of fighting between military and paramilitaries in Sudan, a three-day ceasefire broke down on Thursday, leading to more violence and a looming humanitarian crisis. Residents in Karam and Omdurman spoke of burning homes and widespread looting, as the death toll and injuries continue to mount. The crisis pits forces loyal to Sudan's military leader, General Abdel Fattah al-Buran, against rapid support forces, a coalition of paramilitaries led by warlord Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo. In Darfur, another major region in the crisis, armed fighters, some wearing rapid support forces uniforms, attacked and looted homes and shops. The violence has sent growing numbers of refugees over Sudan's borders and led to a scarcity of fuel, water and food in the capital city. Residents are fleeing, either internationally or to safety in other cities or districts outside of Khartoum. The Sudanese Health Ministry reports that 512 people have been killed and 4,200 wounded, though the true number may be much higher. The World Health Organization reports that only 16% of health facilities are still functioning in Khartoum. Late Wednesday evening, the military reported that General Abdel Fattah al-Buran had given initial approval to a proposal for peace talks by Igat, and to send an army envoy to a nearby capital for talks. In response, Igat reaffirmed an earlier call for an immediate cessation of hostilities, de-escalation, and a return to negotiation. The US and African Union are discussing working together to create a sustainable end to the fighting. The spread of violence and destruction in Sudan continues to bring devastation and chaos to the people and the nation with thousands of civilians being displaced by the conflict and a diminishing access to resources and health services. This crisis has been a long time coming, and it needs to be dealt with swiftly and efficiently before more lives and livelihoods are destroyed. It is time for Sudan to begin a new chapter in its history and reset with a foundation of peace.